Hello friends, today in this video I am going to explain everything about PTE, its modules, marking types and a few more important aspects. Now the purpose of making this video is to introduce PTE once and for all because there are many who have no clue on PTE and there is very less information available on the internet so I thought to make this video and to help you out. So let us start. What is PT? Now the PT is a short form of Pearson Test of English and PTA is Pearson Test of English Academics. It's one of the most popular English tests taken across the world. Unlike other English tests, PT has no other classification. That said, PT Academic is valid for studying as well as settling abroad. Why PT Academic is required? PT is required to get an entry in other countries to study or to settle. Now, since we now have talked about what is PT, let us talk about how popular PT is. Why PT A is popular? Well, not just one or two, but we have plenty of features that make PT so popular among millions of people. Number one, PT Academic has over 200 test centers worldwide. You can book the test online. Dates are generally available and you don't need to wait for days. Second, it is accepted by hundreds of colleges and universities worldwide. Now you can manually check the college in a particular city. For example, if you want to check what all courses are offered in California, Beverly Hills, where you of course you can meet your favorite Hollywood stars, you can check on the website. You can filter the result for the country, that is in this case US. State is California and the city is Beverly Hills. So if you do that, you find an institute Beverly Hills Design Institute, which means this institute accepts PT, right? Third, PT is widely accepted across the land masses of Australia and New Zealand. Yes, and that's for both studying and permanent residence. Next. Another feature of PT Academic is it's quick. You know, the result is out in 48 to 72 hours, though they say five business or working days. The last one, but on the least one, it doesn't waste your time. You can take exam in one go, three hours, that's it. You know, there is no separate calling for speaking. You know what I'm talking about. The test structure. The test of PT is divided into three major parts. Number one is speaking, number two is writing, but speaking and writing, these modules are combined. The third one is reading and the last section is listening. Now in the exam, you have a 10 minute break between reading and listening, which is not mandatory, but certainly if you take a break, it will help you relax before you go for the most tedious task of listening. Remember that my friends. But one thing you should know about PT is, the time allotted for the modules is in the ranges and not just one figure. So PT comes up with ranges, not a one particular figure or time. Why? Because PT never has a fixed number of items asked. So depending on the number of questions being asked, the time changes. Time allotted to each module. The first is speaking and writing. They combine, get you 77 to 93 minutes. Reading is for 32 to 41 minutes. And listening is for 45 to 57 minutes. Now the total possible number of items and their types is very important my friends. The speaking question types. Read aloud they come 6 to 7. Repeat sentence is up to 10. That is 10 to 12. Describe image 6 to 7 questions you will get. Retail lecture could be 3 to 4 items and answer short questions could be 10 to 12. The next is writing question types. Now here you have only two tasks. Summarize written text, that would be 2 to 3. And write essay, that will be 1 to 2. Yes, two essays are possible. The next module is reading question types. The very first is multiple choice, choose single answer. It will be 2 to 3 and so the same goes with multiple choice, choose multiple answers. Reorder paragraphs are 2 to 3. Reading fill in the blanks will be 4 to 5 items. And 5 to 6 items will be reading and writing fill in the blanks. 
Reading fill in the blanks is drag and drop, whereas reading plus writing fill in the blank is drop down. The last section is listening question types. So the listening question types include summarize spoken index that was two to three items. Multiple choice, choose multiple answer will be also two to three. So will be the fill in the blanks. The highlight correct summary is two to three items where you need to select the correct summary. Multiple choice, choose single answers. Again, two to three items. Select missing words. It's two to three items again. Highlight incorrect words. Again, two to three items. Right from dictation, the last one, it's three to four items. So overall, you see in listening, two to three items are common for each question type. Now, let's move on to the most important part. The scoring guideline of PT. The scoring guidelines. The total points for PT is 90. So you get the score out of 90. This means each section has maximum 90 points. That is something you should know. The PT has integrated tasks, which means one item or module can affect the other one. Okay, and that's why you cannot count the points per item, total it and make it 90. For instance, total points for writing is 90. But then you cannot have the addition of points given to summaries and essays there. In simple words, you have two summaries and one essay. Now, that doesn't mean that the total of those three should be 90. In fact, it won't be even half of 90. Yes, that's right. Because the other sections also contribute to writing. And therefore, those rest of the marks come from them. Say, uh, write from dictation. Now, write from dictation, that is WFD that affects listening and writing. So you see the writing, that's right. So some points are contributed to writing score. Okay, so broadly, the scores in PT can be classified as correct and incorrect. And the second one is partial credit or full credit. Friends, obviously, when you answer any question, it's either correct or incorrect. The same thing is in PT. So if you give a correct answer, you get plus one. And if you don't, you get zero. However, this is not true for all the items. In some cases, there is partial credit, which means you'll be punished for a wrong answer. For example, in MCQs, you need to choose more than one option. And that is where if your answer is incorrect, you get minus one. However, the best part of PT is that you don't score less than zero. So the minimum point for any item is zero. In other words, if you select one option in MCQ and if it is wrong, you don't score minus one, you score zero. Now, let's understand the PT scorecard. Well, the PT scorecard has many assessments. Now, the top ones are community skills and the main ones they are. And the down there, <coughs> we have enabling skills that are subsets of the community skills. The enabling skills have impact on your communicative skills. You should remember that. So the total score is given out of 90 for all the skills as we discussed already. But you need to understand the uniqueness of PT scoring, you know, because many of PT's tasks are integrated, as I already said, which means one item would affect the other one. For example, read aloud, you read the passage and then speak, which means it would have effects on both the modules, reading plus speaking. While communicative skills are straightforward, uh, enabling skills require some explanation. Let's go for the enabling skills. The very first one is grammar. The correct use of language with respect to word form and word order at the sentence level. We all know grammar. The oral fluency. The oral fluency is counted what? Smooth, effortless and natural paced delivery of speech. Then comes pronunciation. The way you pronounce things. One thing you should know, friends, in pronunciation, the regional or national varieties of English pronunciation are considered correct to a certain extent. Then comes spelling. Writing of words according to the spelling rules of the language. Now, all national variations are actually considered. That is American English and Brits English or Queen's English. But you should have consistency. So that's what PT says. Then comes vocabulary. No vocabulary means appropriate choice of words used to express meaning as well as lexical range, how variety of words you use. For example, if you are using 
replace, you can also use supplant. So supplant will score high because supplanted is something that is a good vocabulary or better vocabulary as compared to replace. Then comes the last one, written discourse. Now, correctly and communicatively efficient production of written language at the textual level. That is what PT defines this. Now, written discourse is the kind of an umbrella term. It includes everything. What do you write? How do you write? How do you put your thoughts into words and etc. It also includes logical development and range of linguistic resources. Finally, get on to how to prepare for PT. Well, PT requires practice, a proper practice. While many question banks are readily available on YouTube and other websites, you certainly need a proper guidance, precisely a certified PT trainer. That's because you need to put some strategies into place, you know, some tips, some tricks. Now, apart from this, you need to sharpen your skills. How do you do that? You do it by practicing newer questions. Now, this can be done through PT tutorials. Also, on PT tutorials, you can Find certified trainers for coaching. Uh, not just that, uh, you will have an access to PT mock tests. Now, they are very important because you will have new questions to stall. And top of all, you will learn time management, the biggest factor in PT. We also have exclusive materials like how to speak for describe image, how you need to write essays to score high, and so on. Just browse through the site www.pttutorials.com and you can explore more. So friends, that's it. I hope that PT is clear to you now and if you want your desired score, think no further and enroll in the next batch of PT online coaching. Thank you and wish you all the very best for your all your future ventures. Thanks a lot.